two writers. One just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast with Mark and James. I hope you had a really good week, a productive week. hope you enjoyed our last couple of episodes where we talk to authors uh, about how they write, what they write, what makes them tick, what's working for them. We always like those author interviews and I think uh, Tracy and Mel both quite different actually in the way that they've approached things and their journeys but um, uh, equally inspirational for struggling writers like myself and you. I'm not struggling. No, <laughs> you're not struggling. He says he, he pulls up in his Porsche in the morning. I'm definitely not struggling. Um, today we're back to some of the nitty gritty, some of the marketing uh, tricks of the trade, some of the angles, some of the hacks that you can uh, take advantage of to try and advance your career uh, and make things work. And we're going to talk about uh, collaboration, which I guess is something not completely unique to the indie world, but certainly much more prevalent in the indie world than ever used to be in the trad world. Yeah, I think it's 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 easier to collaborate with digital products than it is with with uh, physical books. It's quite hard. To, there are ways you could do it, but it's it's much more convenient to um, work together with something that isn't tangible. Uh, it's you know an intangible item that you can package together quite easily. So, yeah, we we looked at um, something like this ourselves. Actually, is one of those weird things. Nick and I obviously often have the same kinds of ideas at around about the same time, which is a bit weird. So. He's looking at um, Facebook Messenger bots and at the same time that I was looking at them, which is quite quite interesting. Obviously, I'll do it better than he does. Huh. Um, and, uh, of course. Yeah, but one thing he did better than us, actually, he, he looked at um, author collaboration at around about the same time that we were playing around with that, that kind of idea, idea ourselves. We had a site called The Book Locker that we were looking to um, see if we could develop as a place where um, writers could get together to collaborate and offer their books to readers as box sets and collections and things like that. And for one reason or another, that didn't really suit what, what we're doing. So we, we put that on the back burner. Um, Nick, on the other hand, has, has pushed on with his and he's he's created what he calls the Dream Team Network, which is what you'll be talking to him in this interview about. Um, and it's 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 a good idea. It's a place where writers can meet up, they can get inspiration from one another and they can then collaborate to, to try and reach their, each other's readers. So it's a pretty good way of doing things. It's the same thing that Insta Freebie are doing, um, and of course we we have a kind of a residual um, effect of that thing that we started to do in that we've got a number of SPF genre groups on Facebook. So if you're in the SPF community, um, this is all free, of course. You you can um, join up in the thrillers group or the romance group or the um, uh, the all the you know there's about twenty or twenty five different groups that you can join up with and um, meet um, other writers where you can work together. And the same kind of thing that, that Nick will be talking about. But yep. we can mention that when we um, come back at the other, other end of the interview. Yeah, and we should say that um, Nick's is a paid service and he uh, does he goes above and beyond what we do. And we obviously, we have lots of authors in our community. It's a natural thing for us to have a place where people can meet each other of similar genres and then get on with their own collaborations. Nick's taken this whole idea a step further. And, uh, but he is offering a free trial uh, to listeners of the SPF podcast, so details of that at the end of the interview. Um, and that's an opportunity for you to join up and test the waters, see if it's going to work for you. Uh, so let's hear from our friend, Nick Stevenson. Well, Nick, you were one of the very early guests on the SPF podcast. When we, when we had no idea what we're doing, and here we are a year and a half later with still absolutely no clue. I'm not really sure at what I was point. Gonna, I was going to say, do you, have you figured it out yet? But I guess, no. yeah. <laughs> we go from week to week, but uh, somehow it works. Well, we get really interesting people on, and that, that looks after itself. So no pressure. But um, No, none at all. You are one of the interesting guys. And, um, you know, there are lots of people in the world in this space who look at a couple of people who are the pioneers and the voices and the enablers for the vast majority of us who are starting out writing novels and three names always come up which is you joe penn and mark um sometimes called the uk brains trust but it's not i a like U that yeah it's not a uk specific thing it's you know it, it, it are three voices that are very significant in the world of self-publishing how do you feel about that nick stevenson it's it's kind of it was it's very cool it was unintentional um and i hear this a lot as well like people people email in and say you know you mark and joanna you know, really helped me do X, Y, Z. Um, and that's really cool because, 
it wasn't really deliberate. I mean, we all kind of got to know each other um, a few years ago with the idea that, you know, there's probably some way we could we could work together to do stuff. Um, and the fact that people have picked up on that is really cool. And, you know, I guess it's because we all we're all from England kind of helps. It's all, <laughs> although that's almost coincidental, I think, isn't it? I think you are three significant voices in your own right. And they all slightly come at it from maybe very slightly different ways. Um, but coincidentally, live within the sort of triangle of a few hundred miles. Um, yeah, it helps. So we can meet up in London from time to time, which is always useful. Yeah. So uh, let's start then with asking you about the state of the nation. And this is something that people post on every now and again. Uh, some people with a little bit of a glass half empty view saying, oh, you know, Facebook adverts are too expensive now. Everyone's doing them and we've reached saturation point and it's impossible to get your visibility anymore. Other people with a glass half full saying what an exciting time to be an author and a writer and a self, you know, being able to do this without having to go through some stupid pompous gatekeeping that used to exist. Mm. Where are you? Where do you, where's your take on the industry at the moment? Well, I think it's, it's like you said, it's, it's the most exciting time to be writing and publishing. And I think that that's true even compared to just a few years ago, because, you know, we, I have a blog post that I think I wrote four years ago that says, you know, everybody is complaining because Kindle has reached saturation point and the Kindle gold rush is over. And we hear the same variation on that theme sort of every few weeks, someone comes out with, you know, some, some upsetting kind of perspective on things. And I think people just have that view. You know what I mean? Like you said, the glass half empty, glass half full. I'm, I'm very much a, you know, the glass is both half full and half empty at the same time. So let's try and figure out the best way to go forward. So I try not to get too emotional about it. But from my perspective, um, the, you know, the, the way Kindle opened up um, the ability for people to publish and, and just get their words out there, um, that's been around for a while now. But the technology that's kind of required to make that easy is getting better every single day. So sort of back in 2008, 2009, when it first became technically possible to do, nobody was doing it because it's incredibly difficult. And now sort of nearly 10 years later, you know, you can set up an entire business structure online using tools that you rent month to month, you know, and you can set up pretty much any kind of automated systems, marketing systems, sales systems, anything you like now. And even a couple of years ago, um, when, you know, when I first started doing teaching and courses, the technology has changed so much in just a couple of years that, you know, while, while you know, the, the, the basic kind of I can publish a book idea is still there your ability to get it in front of more readers is now easier than it's ever been. You know, Facebook advertising took off, uh, Amazon ads are taking off, other ways of doing advertising is coming in every single day, new ways of reaching people. Um, I mean, just, just a couple of weeks ago, we started using Facebook's Messenger bots as well as a way of getting people in and talking to them and connecting with them one-on-one. -on -one. And it's just incredible just how, you know, I can be talking to somebody uh, in Russia or the United States or Australia um, and I literally was, I was sat there doing this experiment, um, just sent out a message saying, you know, if you want to talk to me on Messenger, here's a link, just ask me anything and I'll reply to you. I'll be sat here at my desk for the next couple of hours. And I think I ended up having 150 conversations open, talking to people from all over the world um, about their books and what they're doing and how they're getting on. And, and, you know, the feeling from them, from those people who were talking to me was very, very positive. You know, some of the people were saying, you know, I've... I'm writing my first book and I don't know what to do next. Um, or, you know, I've written a few books and, you know, I don't know, should I be focusing on writing or, or marketing or whatever? And I was able to connect with them. And you can do that to your readers as well. And just the possibilities are now opening up more than at any time that I can remember. So it's, you know, for me, I think it's just getting better and better every single day. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think we also, we have to remember that, although lots of books are going on to Kindle and some of these glass half empty people whatever they they put their stats up saying look this is why we can't get visibility but we talk to each other who people who are aware of marketing they followed you possibly your courses they followed us possibly our courses as well they're thinking about how to communicate with people that's probably one percent of the people who put books on kindle are thinking like that and doing that i mean it's i meet people all the time who say I've got a novel and they don't even they literally don't even know how to upload the book to Kindle if they've done that they don't know how to do anything else so 
it's a, don't be fooled by the growth of the amount of books available on Kindle. There's a small fraction of people who are working hard at marketing and finding readers, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you don't have to be um, in, the, in the top 100 constantly to make a decent living out of this. I mean, there's people who have five, six books, 10 books, two books, who are kind of sat quite happily in that sort of undiscovered region where they're not like household names, they're not blockbusters, they're not hitting the top of the New York Times, but they have a few books bringing in $20, $30, $40 a day. Um, and that's enough to, to make a full-time living for a lot of people, or it's enough to supplement a full-time income and get people doing what it is they love. And that's the goal. The goal isn't, for me anyway, superstardom or getting movies made out of your books or becoming a millionaire. You know? And the people I talk to, their goal is to have this thing they've written read by people you know getting read is, is the main goal and, and making a little bit of money to help support that is the goal as well and you don't have to be at the, in the top 0.1 percent to make that happen and if there's six million books on kindle you can bet that 95 percent of them have just been stuck up there and forgotten about and it's that kind of five percent that we can gain access to using these tools that i've talked about today um, already you know to get that to get that exposure and really get some good results out of it you know so it's just aiming for that spot and really just working at it yeah and uh, absolutely possible uh, some people would say you are a superstar anyway and you've you've begun crashing sports cars i believe which i think yeah is, is a superstar move right i think so yeah i had to <laughs> it's very it's a bit of a diva move yeah i kind of it was the most boring crash in the universe like ever it was so slow it was um literally just a very wet road and a corner that I accelerated out of slightly too much and the car went sideways at like 20 miles an hour right. into some soft grass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not exactly... But, yeah, I like to pretend it was more dramatic than that, but unfortunately it wasn't. Well, for the YouTube uh, viewers, we'll stick a picture up on um, and show the... It looks more dramatic, the picture, than the way you describe it. It does. It's the angle. It's my photography skills shining uh, through. I think old Rowan Atkinson, who I'm often... Un unfairly compared with Mr. Bean lives up your way and he does occasionally have spectacular crashes in his um, yeah he does he does not he lives fairly close actually his his kids went to my old school actually um, I never had the chance to meet him um, but he is in the news from time to time because he's like cr crashed a McLaren or something yeah like into a tree yeah it's <laughs> just like well that's much more rock star than me it was quite a serious one as well but he walked away okay okay look now we're talking about um there's this group of people maybe it's not one percent five percent whatever the total number of people who listen to you listen to mark uh joe and a uh, part of this this bubble of people who are, who are being active about marketing and being proactive about and thinking what's going to work and, and and being agile and all the rest of it and actually, one of the things I like about you, Nick, is you think a lot about how we can help each other, how we can collaborate with each other, which sometimes is completely free of charge, right? Because we've both done our, our own work with our own lists. And um, it's it's a bit, of a, a bit of an easy, low-hanging fruit type move that a lot of people don't make or don't think to make because perhaps don't know how to start. But this is something mm -hmm. I know you're, you're thinking about a lot at the moment. Yeah, and it kind of comes under the heading of author collaboration. And this was something that I was kind of keen on right from the very beginning. Um, as I was starting to build up an audience, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I've got, let's say I've got 500 people on an email list and I want to do a promotion or I want to do a launch. And I want to reach more people. Now at the time I was kind of researching um, how can I expand the people who might be seeing this? And, you know, something that came up was you know, um, a term that we're familiar with now, which is called affiliate marketing, where you would recruit affiliates and you'd say, right, for every product that you help me sell, you know, by promoting it to your audience, I'll track that and I'll give you commission. And that, you know, I knew that wasn't going to work for Kindle books because there's no real way of doing that. You can't really say, you know, if you promote my, my book, I'll give you 50% of the purchase price. You know, it's, potentially feasible, but it's not something that's worth kind of digging through. Um, but the, the concept was there. Can I get my, my, my books in front of a bigger audience by offering something in return to those people who have the audience? So instead of giving them commission, maybe I could just give them the same thing in return. So the idea being that, you know, if you help me promote my launch this month, I'll help you promote your, uh, your launch 
next month. So it's mutually beneficial. So I, I spent some time reaching out to people who were in a similar sort of niche to me, similar sort of audience size, um, as best as I could guess, and kind of built up those relationships over time. And then eventually said, you know, we've got similar books, similar audience, we're both growing an email list. Um, I'd like to do a launch of my new book coming up. Can you help me promote it? Um, if so, I'll do the same thing for you next time you've got a launch or promotion. And that was kind of the, kind of the, the very basic premise behind it. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, when two people with 500 readers on their email list get together, that's suddenly a thousand people seeing the book. So if you've got, you know, or you team up with two other people, that's 1500 people seeing the book. You've just tripled your audience and you've not paid anything. All you need to do is kind of reciprocate down the line. And it kind of started from there. Um, but as you can imagine, you know, trying to find these people and build up that relationship and do that over time, it took quite a long time. So you know, six months, I had like two people that I could email up and uh, get promotional help with. Um, and that kind of, that, that thought stuck with me for a long time because over the years we have grown together and we now have much, much larger audiences and we still help each other out. But what about someone who is starting where I was, you know, who has maybe a hundred people on their email list or doesn't have anybody on their email list yet, but wants to, or is really trying to grow that. How do they build those relationships, find those people and do that collaboration without it taking them six months? And that's where this kind of idea came from. This question was, how do we do that? Um, and so I decided to try and set something up that would allow authors to be able to just hit the ground running, just go in there um, and get started. Um, because it, it boils down to two things, I think, you know, familiarity, so knowing somebody, being able to send them an email or a text message and then respond, um, and two, uh, mutual, uh, mutually beneficial. So if you can have those two things, chances are you're gonna get a great collaboration relationship going on. So I decided let's, let's set up a, a community, a private community that allows those two things that familiarity and that mutual uh, benefit, let's put that out there so that you can start off knowing that that's the case. Um, so I built something called the Dream Team Network, which is um, a private Facebook group, essentially at the beginning. Um, and all it was, was I said, um, I invited some of my customers in, so paying customers in, I said, the goal of this group is solely to do joint promotions, group promotions. You all know each other because you're all doing, you know, one of my courses, you're all growing an email list. You're all in the same place. You all want the same thing. Um, I want you to work together and I'll help you find each other so that you can do some group promotions. And people were like, this is, this is fantastic. But how do I do a group promotion? You know, how do I, what should I be doing if I meet someone? I was like, okay, good point. So I, <laughs> I put some training together. I said, right, there's four types of group promotion. So it's like a cross promotion where, you know, one person will email out one month then the next person will do the same thing the month after. Uh, there's a joint promotion where a big group of people can join together and everybody's kind of blasting it out everywhere. Um, there's uh, anthologies, like you're doing a box set and everyone's promoting the box set, trying to get it into the charts. Um, and then there's contests and sweepstakes as well, where you can be offering prizes and getting people onto different lists and offering you know, free books to get them on there. Um, so like these are the four main ones and I gave them some, some training on how to do it. And then people started implementing it and saying, right, okay, um, I'm a sci-fi author. Um, I write this kind of sci-fi. I want to do a cross promotion in August. Um, you know, leave me a message if you want to team up. And you know, this person might get 10, 15 messages from people wanting to join in. Um, the promotion would run and each person would, would get some more readers on their email list, get some more sales. And then it all came from, you know, giving them that foot in the door to meet people writing in their genre at the same sort of level as them so that they can use these group promotion strategies to just get more readers, you know, and it doesn't cost anything. It's great. There's no, you don't have to pay 600 bucks for a book bub ad. You just have to follow the training I've set out and just join up with other people and, and you're done. And it was something I started uh, <clears throat> experimenting with last year and then kind of put it into a more um, kind of streamlined package to help people really get there as quickly as possible. And it's been working amazingly well. So that's kind of like my pet project at the moment and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about about the results and how it's been working. I should just point out that a small naked child did appear behind your right 
ear uh, during that answer. So I'm going to stick. Oh, a... he he's on cue, is he? Yeah, he, he was on cue. So I'll probably stick a little blur on that just to save him <laughs> uh, for future years. This being dragged out and used against him at his 16th birthday or something. So people may Very be wise. wondering why a blur appeared uh, <laughs> at, uh, during that answer on your your right hand side. Um, okay, so you've set you've set it up, and people obviously and we know we've done a little bit of this ourselves in our own group, and we've got genre groups of people talking to each other, and actually it's a really obvious thing when you've got a community to enable people to 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 talk to each other so what are the key things you've noticed about when it works and perhaps when it doesn't work so well i mean i'm thinking the most obvious one is is uh, a dovetailing of genre and like-minded mm. readers yeah i think what's been really interesting from a psychological point is looking at the kind of people who get success from this so i mean as as you know like a lot of people um, in the courses industry People want you to just give them a checkpoint and go, right, here's a bullet list. Do these five things and you'll have sales and you'll have readers. And people are like, I'm comfortable with that. You know, I can take this and I can be quite passive with it. And I can sit in my office or in my bedroom in the dark and mull it over and get around to it. People are very comfortable with that. But when you go to them and you say, hey, I want you to go and meet this person, go and talk to them and go and form this kind of promotion together as a group, people go, oh, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, I've got to go out and do something. Um, no, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. Um, I have, I mean, I literally get emails from people saying, you're expecting me to do a promotion. Yeah. What? what? And it's, it's just been very interesting to see that the different mindset shift. So we've seen, I mean, a lot of people who are naturally very proactive, the minute they join up, they're just jumping in there and they're going, right, I've got this promo coming up. Let's do it. Let's join up. Let's, let's do something together. And, you know, they're getting these results quickly. You now, like within a week, they're seeing these results coming through. Then there's other people who are kind of in the latter camp, uh, in the former camp, and they just want to, they, they kind of lurk there for a bit and they, they kind of see what's going on. And they maybe leave a couple of comments and they, they, they kind of scope it out a bit. Um, and then eventually they, they're kind of seeing how people are getting results out of it. And then they go, right. I'm, I'm jumping in. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to do this. And they post their first promotion. Um, we help them fill it by kind of promoting it to our network and going, hey, you know, Bill's got this promo coming up. Go join it if you write this kind of book. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden they've got 15 other authors all helping promote each other's books. And they're just kind of like, wow, why didn't I do that like a month ago? That was, that's crazy. Um, but we're working on a way to educate people into how to do this for the best success without kind of putting yourself out there too much. Because we're all kind of a little bit introverted, I think. Yeah. And we don't really want to be up on a stage going, you know, look at me, look at me. Um, but we do want to get the results. So we've been working behind the scenes on ways that we can kind of, you know, nudge people up that mountain to, to post their first promo um, and get involved. And when they do, they really do see some amazing results. So it's been really cool. Um, and like you said about the genre is... Um, you know, we, we started tracking who's writing what, um, and we're tracking, I think, 47 different genres at the moment. We don't want to get too granular, because what you'll end up with is, you know, everyone everyone thinks they write this unique genre. So you just end up with like 3,000 yeah. people all writing in a different genre. So we're trying to group it a little bit. Um, but we're seeing interesting things, you know, we've got mysteries and thrillers and romance and sci-fi fantasy are all, you know, the big ones. Uh, but then we see all the, all the sort of sub-genres and spin-off genres are coming in as well. And there's lots of people, you know, writing westerns and cowboy fiction and all kinds of different combinations thereof. And we use that tagging to kind of try and match them up a little bit and see who's writing this, who's writing that. Let's try and target you with what you're interested in um, and try and help you that way. So it's, it's, it's very key that we make sure people are kind of at the same level-ish and writing in a similar genre so that that's a good mix. And by the, you know, by the merit of them being in the group, um, you know, I believe that they are kind of a good fit for themselves already because they've shown that initiative um, and they're actually in this group doing work. So uh, that's been really cool. Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right about the introverted nature of most of us who are writers. And I include myself with this. And yeah. I noticed yesterday somebody posted in our Facebook group. They were asking if anybody knew how old a pub was that we all met in at, at the London Book Fair. And somebody posted back saying, well, why don't you phone them and ask them? And I'm thinking, because it's exactly the sort of thing I would hate to have to do. No, that, no I, I never phone anybody. No, I, I hate it. Exactly, me so as I'm well. I'm hungry. I want a takeaway. Yeah. So Can I, think, I order it online? No, I'm not going to eat it then. I, I, I'm the same as you. I'd be quite happy.
happy if I could do everything through the keyboard and all this. Yeah. When I walk into the bank and there's all those automated machines, I love it. And then someone walks up to you and says, can I help you do that? And I'm like, get away from me. There's a, there's a machine. <laughs> can you not see? Yeah. I'm putting my PIN number in. Leave me exactly. alone. Exactly. I don't need help from humans. Um, anyway, so we're a bit like that. So to make the system, you know, kind of a little bit automated or as easy as possible, I think obviously is, is a major start for you. Yeah. But and one of the things we're doing is um, we're, we're saying you know, it's quite, it can be a bit nerve wracking. Like, I don't like picking up the phone to talk to like even a restaurant. Generally, I'll email them. Um, yeah. And it's the same with Facebook groups. Like people don't necessarily, if they're very introverted, they don't necessarily want to post something on Facebook to get replies. Because then they're like, well, what if no one replies? What if people are rude to me? What if they're horrible? You know, and it's just, it's a, it's a whole big thing. And I, I feel that sometimes as well. So what we're doing now is we're saying, okay, fill in this anonymous form and we will post it for you and we will get you people into your promo uh, without you ever having to put your face out there, so to speak. And that's something that's kind of going to be very cool as well. So we're trying to work around the built-in introver um, yeah. introversion that we all have. So it's a challenge. The introversion model. And now, how's it going? Have you seen some good successes? We have, yes. Um, I think one of the cool things is that because you're not paying to run these promos, um, and because the technology now is there as well with book funnel, um, Insta freebie, MailChimp, ConvertKit, whatever you want to use, it's so easy to set up a promotion. It's so easy to get email addresses and send stuff out that people are doing promotions once, twice a month now for different things. And especially authors who have multiple pen names, they might be doing two or three promotions a month um, for their different pen names and getting people involved. And, you know, those people are seeing, you know, you know, they might have each promotion gets them 500 new readers. They're doing that three times a month all year, plus everything else they're doing as well. Their mailing list is just going up, 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 up. And then, of course, that means you can then sell to the email list later on as well. So it really is a no brainer. Um, and like you said, low hanging fruit. I think that's a great term. It's just right. It's there for the picking. So that's what we want to just encourage people to to go get it. And are these um, all aimed at? giveaways to build your mailing list or are you also are people also running these to cross promote books for sale it's a mix really i think the the majority of the promotions are for building email lists because that's that's quite easy um it's quite you know it's it's non it's it's not as scary as doing a sales promotion and because then you know you have that email list you can use it later um but some people are kind of saying i'm launching a book next month um, can I get some people to help me promote it, um, and then we'll we'll return the favour next time. Um, and that's been that's been useful as well, getting those extra eyeballs um, on the launch. Um, and we do have some testimonials put together from people who have been getting some cool results as well. And it's just the speed that people are seeing results with is incredible. And once they once they understand what to do, like how do I how do I run a cross promotion? How do I run a joint promotion? Once they know what to do. It's very, very quick for them to get the people on board, get the team put together, and then just go, 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 go. It's been really impressive watching people because it's, it's all their own initiative. And we're giving them the, the structure and the community and the framework to make it easy for them. But they're doing the work. They're getting it out there and you know, really being proactive. And that's, that's what's most satisfying for me is seeing people take that initiative and go and get great results with it. It's been fantastic. Yeah. And from a reader point of view, I think that um, obviously if you've got readers on your list and they like your books, you're not going to produce enough books for them to be reading. You're going to produce, if you're if you're Mark Dawson, you might do three or four a year. For the rest of us, um, you do one every two years at my rate. But um, the point is that it's not a bad thing for your readers for you to say in between your launches, this is, I love this guy's writing. He's a bit like me. I think you're going to enjoy it. There's no harm in that at yeah. all. So, And yeah. it should be focused around the reader anyway, shouldn't it? It is. Um, I did an experiment with this a few years back, um, kind of before this idea of networking and systemizing it came about, really, is I, I was working with another author in my genre, um, and we were going to do an experiment. We were, like, um, we were thinking, can we influence each other's book sales by kind of getting, it, getting our books linked together with Amazon, like the algorithm, will it kind of link them together? So what we did was we, we ran a promotion together and in our emails, we were promoting each other's books. So one of mine and one of his. And I would email out about it and say, hey, uh, you know, my book is on sale, but so is this other author. You know, you should grab them both because they're both, you know, like 70% off. And he did the same thing. 
And we, what we found was, yes, we, we managed to double our sales because we were both emailing about it, which was kind of the obvious outcome. Um, but also because the same people were picking up the same books, both at the same time, they got really heavily linked together, um, like in Amazon's also bought section um, and the recommendation engine, they were very strongly linked. Um, and what we found was that for, for quite a while afterwards, you know, for several weeks and months afterwards, um, we found that our sales and we plotted them on the graph, you know, as they would go up and down, the other guys would go up and down as well. And when someone had a promotion and they'd get a, a, get a big peak, the other guy would get a bit of a peak as mm. well. And they were, it was just really cool to see how you could, you know, ethically manipulate that engine because it's still readers enjoying one thing and enjoying the other. We're just putting more of that through in a shorter period of time. And that's a really cool kind of extra bonus you get from this is that you know, the, the, that saying the, the rising tide kind of raises all ships is trying to get into that as well because readers will buy two books. They won't buy mine and then think, well, I bought Nick, so I'm not going to buy that other guys. They'll probably buy both if it's compelling enough. So why not team up? You know, only good things can happen. And we kind of proved this with data and graphs. So yes. it, was, uh, it was very cool to look at. Yeah, those algorithms. I mean, obviously, they're tip top secret inside, but you can start to demystify them, start to unravel them if you do that kind of exactly that kind of experiment. In a yeah, way. it's just what does the reader want? Yeah, that's what the algorithm is there to do. What does the reader want to buy? Um, and you can use that as the principle for your promotions. Pit the reader first. I suppose one step further forward than that would be to go into a full collaboration with somebody who you're on a very uh, even keel with, which is perhaps to do a joint box set. Is that something yeah. you'd encourage? That's the same thing as well. I mean, if you can, uh, you could do both actually. And this is why I like box sets is they are a distinct and unique title as far as Amazon's concerned and the other guys are concerned. So kind of the, the best situation is to have your individual books for sale and then you have a box set or an anthology that's like an extra title that you can use for specific promotions. And that can work very well as well. You know, you have to take into account pricing rules and stuff. Um, but let's say you've got, a, you know, five books and someone else has got five books and you team up with a bunch of other authors and you all put your first book into this box set. That becomes a new title um, and you can use that to do short term promotions. You can launch a new title. You can make it permanently free. You can do whatever you like with it. That's an extra way for readers to discover you and other people at the same time. So it's there's just so many options and possibilities for this that this is why we set up um, the Dream Team Network was to say, you know, you want to do this. Here is a big bunch of people who all want to do it too. Um, and here's your genre. And we'll help you get, you know, in touch with the right people and we'll show you what to do. And you should start seeing results pretty quickly. So that's that's why it's so exciting. Yep. So you've given this um, this idea a title and a, and a brand, Dream Team Network. Let me stop my camera again because it always goes whenever I'm talking. It goes once every half an hour needs to be starting, but it waits until I'm talking yeah, and of course. does that because uh, it hates me. Um, yeah, you've given it this uh, this title, DTN. So how do people get involved? Well, I, th I believe we're going to set up a, a little link um, possibly uh, underneath the video or on the podcast, depending on how you are consuming today's media well i can I, um, but, I can make up a url and then my on. my, this is, this my is servant my servant john dyer will then create uh create everything in the background so if we say selfpublishingformula.com forward slash dtn sounds perfect i like acronyms if people go there um, yeah we have set up a free trial and this is this is one of the things i wanted to include was the ability for people to try this out for free um, because, you know, once you're in there and once you've figured out the, the learning and you're getting to know people, you know, you can run these promotions, join them and host them as often as you like, you know, as much as you want. And I want to be able to give people that chance to try it out and say, you know, this is, this is awesome. This is really working for me. Um, and then if it's not working for them, you know, you have this, this free trial, you've not spent any money and that's, that's cool. So the idea for me is to get as many people involved as possible so that we can try and educate people on you know a it's not that scary um b we'll show you how to do everything and c we'll help you hook up with the right people the right authors in your genre so that you can do these promotions quickly and start seeing results so got that free trial set up for you 30 days free get access to the community all the video training uh we also have like a messenger notification system as well you know all kinds of extra cool things that you can see and it's all going to be at that link for you if you want to check it out. So 
I'd love to see you over in the group and we'll definitely help you get set up quick. Yep. So just visit selfpublishingformula.com forward slash DTN Delta Tango N November or yes, Dream Team November. Network might be might be the better way of saying it. Yeah. Um, and you can get involved in that. Great. Well, you mentioned bots. We mentioned those at the beginning. Is there anything before we sign off, Nick, that's hot that we should know about? What's what's new? What 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 are you pioneering with? Uh, bots is the focus at the moment, um, and it's been very interesting. And I think if you if you kind of have been aware of the internet marketing space over the last couple of months, you'll have seen you know all this excitement about messenger bots and you know all these courses coming out about it. And I try to take everything with a pinch of salt because most of these new platforms tend to do okay and then dwindle horribly over time. Um, but what I wanted to do was really test this out because it has a lot of potential. So if you have a second way of reaching someone directly, that's only going to be a good thing. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, all of these crazy stats that people were talking about, like 100% open rates and 70% click rates were actually true. And <laughs> do they hold up? And that's that's the key thing. So we've, we've been kind of really, really hammering it for the last couple of weeks. Um, and we haven't compiled the data yet, uh, but it does look very promising only if you're using it in a particular way. So you, it, there's a different mindset to email versus messenger. And we're just starting to learn how that affects the metrics. So I don't have a conclusion as yet, um, but I definitely will soon. And that's been really fun, fun to do as well. But otherwise, you know, it's the same sort of principles as always. Um, get traffic to, to your book pages, get them onto an email list, build trust and sell. Um, and whatever tools help you do that, uh, it doesn't matter as long as it works for you. So we're trying to find these new things and make sure they work. And then we'll tell everybody about them if we think it's worth doing. Yeah, it's funny how the different ways of talking to people require a different tone. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's an important thing that people need to understand. There's no copy and pasting in this business. You have to, well, there's actually a reason about copy and pasting in this business, but for different channels, you have to have a different voice. Yeah. Great. Nick, thank you so much indeed. Um, it's been, as always, a great pleasure to talk to you. Uh, the odd interesting sight in the background as well which always so it's yeah it's, it's always different every time it's usually a dog there's a lot a cat. there's a lot of stuff coming out of the fridge we should say it is, it is 90 degrees in the uk today we're it's both, ridiculous we're not used to this us brits are we we sort of start bursting into no, flames we, we like it because we can then complain about it yes exactly it's like it's hotter than the bahamas today <laughs> which is a problem because <laughs> yeah, yeah the whole country shuts down anyway and we don't have air conditioning no. we only get this hot three days a year we can sit so in we our just cars have to sit and suffer well, yeah you, well you can't sit in your car because it's probably the uh, shop i can sit in my wife's car as long as i don't drive it yeah <laughs> they're the rules nick uh, brilliant fabulous thank you very much indeed for joining us and we'll catch up again no doubt because you're one of our close friends on the podcast and one of our early uh, pioneers in this industry and we'll uh, we'll always revisit i think pleasure So uh, you haven't crashed your Porsche yet in the way that Nick has crashed his. Was it a Maserati? I can't remember what it's called. He has a Maserati. Um, and uh, that's, he's got a, it's a rear, 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 I can't speak today, a rear wheel drive. And I think mm -hmm. he told me he was coming out of a corner on a wet road. Yeah, he and said he that. A little, bit, a little bit too much um, right foot and uh, spun the car out. Now, my car on the other hand is a four wheel drive um, and almost impossible to, to, to do that with. So I've never had, and of course, it's raining very heavily in Salisbury today. Yeah. I felt very comfortable. Um, if I was driving Nick's car, I'd be very frightened, I should think. Interestingly, though, your car's better than mine, no doubt, but I've got a nice Volvo, and I can switch off a couple of the things mm. in there, and it suddenly becomes quite difficult to handle. So you will be uh, the, your car's computer will be doing a lot of the work for oh, you. Oh, no, I know. I took, I've, before I bought my car, I had a, a, a track day right. and, um, involving things like skid pans and things, and um, you can switch all the driver aids off, and yeah. with those all switched off, it is terrifying. Yes, a handful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with them on, it's very difficult. It just wants to point straight. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it was lovely talking to um, talking to Nick. At the time we we're recording this, that hot spell that we had is over, and it's pouring, absolutely teeming with rain for days on a on, in a row here in the UK, back to normal. But it was roasting hot, and um, uh, I mentioned in the interview that I did have to do a bit of blurring because his son. I mean, why the heck, why would he wear clothes anyway at that age? He'd run around the house, house naked, ideally not on 
in the back of a, a video shot, but there you go. Yes, James, thankfully he's not going to be arrested no. by, um, <laughs> by the police for um, slightly dodgy uh, video. YouTube footage. Uh, but lovely to talk to Nick. An exciting project, which we'll keep in touch with. It'll be very interesting to see how that, that works. And just to remind you again, an opportunity to sign up for a free trial of Nick's Dream Team Network. Not too easy to say if you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash DTN. And uh, yeah, if you join our Facebook community, you'll find a similar set of genre groups that you can join uh, without the proactive side from us. It's just an opportunity for you to find like minded authors or similar genre authors, I should say, uh, and you can collaborate with them. But yeah, so author collaboration. I know you've done this um, to varying degrees. I remember very early on, uh, you'd got together with uh, Russell Blake, I think, and you'd done some joint advertising for similar Mm -hmm. uh, books. Um, I don't know if you're in a position to announce at the moment what you're doing next in terms of author collaboration. Not really, no. There's, keep that I'm, secret I'm for doing now. some kind of, uh, yeah, there's some writing going on in a couple of my worlds, but we're going to keep that quiet for now. But um, yep. the, yeah, the Russell, like, Russell thing was good. I mean, the benefit to that is that we are both reasonably well known um, and uh, we could run a Facebook campaign for a couple of free books in the first in both of our series and then we can share the subscribers and also half the cost. So... Uh, it was a it was a very cost effective way to add subscribers. I think I added we we each added two or three thousand subscribers for maybe twenty cents a subscriber, something like that. So it was um yeah it was, it was very effective. Great. Okay, Mark, thank you very much indeed. Um, don't forget you can join us, uh, support the podcast by going to patreon.com forward slash spf podcast. Uh, Patreon spelled P A T R E O N. You might even get a mug uh, if you become a Patreon subscriber. I'm keeping this mug now, by the way. And, um, good, good luck with that. Property is theft, and <laughs> possession is nine tenths of the law, something like that. And uh, that's my mug. Good. Have a great week. We'll speak to you next week. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Self Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.